Hey, what's up everybody? Zafer here. And I wanted to talk about today my new track, A Lot of Progressive House. Just dropped it last week and I want to make a video kind of explaining a little bit of the process behind it all and showing everybody uh, how I made it. Uh, hopefully this will help you a little bit in your productions or give you some insight as to how I go about making um, a lot of progressive house. So I'll go ahead, go ahead and give us a preview here. Alright, so that's the essence of the track. You kind of get what's going on here. We'll start with the uh, top side. I'll just kind of work top down just because this is typically how I um, how I arrange, you know. But uh, it is no really typical fashion that I go about arranging. Um, but I'm going to start with the main theme of it all and then I'll, I'll show you kind of how I, I tied it all together. So we'll start with the uh, this little chord progression here. And uh, basically, it's just a harmless preset or a harmless patch that I made. Uh, but it's real simple to make. Usually, the big deal here is uh, your unison and uh, the pluck, release, these knobs right here. This kind of section, this section, as far as when it comes to designing. So it's not really a, uh, anything complicated as far as sound design goes. A lot of it's just kind of like stock. But the idea is, is you just pick the sounds that go well with each other. So I have the little the little uh like section layout the top layout and you notice it's not really any kind of like baseline with it or anything this is kind of like the upper upper portion of the chords that are just played throughout the track so i have that going and then what i have on top of that is a little layer here and i uh, i've talked about this before but um this is just a little trick that a lot of people use, including myself, to kind of thicken up the uh, the peak or the like the top of the pluck. So you can hear it here. And basically, I just have it following the whole rhythm of the uh, pluck section. It's just a random percussion sample I, I found, and I kind of grew it in and put it in on top of there. So I didn't even need a whole another like. Uh, uh, a channel for it I just added one just because but really that's really how the whole thing is made up um, as far as how I came up with the uh, like the uh, 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 like baseline and how the, the rhythm goes and stuff like that it's sort of it's sort of a culmination of both the top and the bass so the bass I kind of developed as I was working on the pluck part of it as well so it all kind of ties it to each other. So when we started with the plugs, I kind of made the plugs and I was adjusting them as I was making the bass as well. So you can see that it's not just a, once you have the plugs, it's done. Or once you have the chords or anything like that, it's done. There's always, you know, it's always going to change a little bit. But we're going to go ahead and hop into the bass because that is the second most important part of the tune, in my opinion. Well, I guess the most important part because you need the way the, the track movement, but I like to have the chords kind of figured out as well. So either way, the bass is pretty important and we'll listen to that. So you can see it has like a real like um it has movement to it, but it's not, it's not a, it's not, the jumps aren't supposed to be too crazy yet. You know, you can see the spaces aren't, this is the biggest jump right here. And it's only because instead of going down, this is the original kind of baseline right here, the first eight bars of it. And then the second eight bars is simply duplicated across, but I took the second little phrase of it and uh, brought it up an octave. Same with this little part of it too. I kind of did the same thing. I just brought it up an octave. It's the second phrase 
and this created a like a, a a 16 bar variant you know like an eight bar variant to the bass so it's not always just moving the same way every eight bars the entire time now it's it's always up to taste you know but this is just a way to kind of uh, add variation to the bass without actually having to add extra uh, 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 notes you know that you, that you've already worked with so it's just something to keep in mind uh, but in, in my case I, I did that because I wanted the uh, idea of this track was I wanted to kind of like have a, uh, a more like happier ending you know kind of how, how, how it starts right there kind of gets low it's like the lowest portion of the track so it's like you know it's it's like the lowest part you know and then here on the second phrase of it it adds that like extra uh hopeful kind of feel to it at the end and this is something i really like to do in all of my music you know just add that that uh hopeful uplifting quality to it and I think with with the bass uh, when you kind of roll it up like that kind of lead it up it gives the track itself a more you know inspiring hopeful feel to it so something to keep in mind next up here I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the arps uh, You can see the um, silent patch here, and then it's linked up. Basically, the way I do arps is always I aim to make them very uh, atmospheric, and I don't want to make them too overbearing into the track. Sometimes they're they're like the element, you know, but uh, I just think they're uh, they don't have to be the main element, but they got to be part of the uh, atmosphere that makes up the entire track. So I kind of focus on that portion when I use arps. I don't um I don't really uh you know worry too much about having a like consistent steady thing. It's more to me about uh creating these unique kind of bounces and spaces between the track whenever you decide to go whenever you are using the arps and whenever they do go through it, it creates more of like a space uh around in the atmosphere rather than just being some element inside of the track. So that's kind of my whole thing here. It uh, plays around the uh, the chord progression essentially, but it's it's always on the same. It always ends lowest here, in the top parts here, and it kind of always starts top, and then it kind of goes down low and to the middle, and that's the whole point of this this little art arp section. Is and I'm sorry if this is confusing. I I, I really don't know how to explain this really well. You know, I'm trying. But uh, the the whole thing is is the the, the atmosphere kind of goes up and down as the track is moving. So that's why the arps doesn't always have the little top portion. It kind of introduces it, but it's also because I know the delay is going to carry this top note a lot further along than like these other notes. So the idea is I'm taking advantage of the, how the how our ears are going to hear more of the top portions of the arps more than the lower but the lower portions still matter so uh when i do that that's kind of what i'm doing i'm kind of looking for ways to melodic melodically uh add atmosphere with the arps uh by hitting a key or an echo that's you know in the key or the scale of the track i'm working in but i like to use the upper registers as a way to kind of give a little bit of a accent or signature to what the ARP is doing. I hope that made sense. <laughs> and then um, and then what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go ahead and go to the uh, pad portion. And it's uh the pads are usually man, I usually don't I usually don't go too crazy with the pads. It just usually just depends on how the track itself is going. Sometimes I even start tracks just from the pad because they create such an atmosphere that's that's really cool to me and, and really the atmosphere really kind of sells me from how the track goes. So whenever I do design tracks, it's, it's, it's big, big pad, chord, bass kind of uh, relationship here. Uh, so I'll show you here, the pads here are really simple and um, they're just three notes essentially going across. So essentially the pad is a drone, a, a chord drone, so to speak. 
and that's the whole the whole purpose is just to give the track itself it's part of a unique flavor and atmosphere and then here at the end of the end of the pad i have a little you know a little like variation really it's just kind of highlighting a different note in the scale and this just kind of gives the pad a little bit of movement uh uh, as the track is going along, but as you notice, it's really meant to kind of be more of a drone. It's meant to be just atmospheric. Both pads are uh, actually they're just three three notes overall, with a little bit of extra accents added in that uh, complement the uh, chord progression. And you see, it's just all of it. All of it like makes sense in context with the track but in by itself you know you can see that they're just all basically just drones played with uh with with the chord with the chord progression in in, in the progression of the chord uh this is what i used uh this is called hybrid if you haven't used it or don't know what it is um it's just basically another subtractive synth but it has two uh different two different uh openings or settings you know here that you can use and it has basically it has six total oscillators so it's really fun you can get really creative with it but typically what i do is i just pick a preset and i just uh, edit the uh, knobs and stuff from there big thing here is the filter envelope amplifier uh the filter uh cutoff knobs overdrive distortion things of that nature uh, whenever i load up my pads and stuff i'm always kind of tweaking those as i go i even change things like the actual uh uh uh, wave itself what the shape is itself uh, because you know it doesn't have to be what you know this is just basically I consider these like the baseline of it more than uh, having to use them sometimes I just go ahead and go go with what they sound like but uh, a lot of times I'll, I'll edit these kind of oscillators to create my own sort of unique effect within it all it's still the same sound essentially but you'll notice that it won't be quite the same if you pulled it up uh, the exact same one in yours and that's because you should always kind of tweak it to make it fit whatever because sometimes they're not always going to need to be uh, so high or so low or vice versa and a big thing too is always be careful of how they affect them and whenever you uh, mess with presets you want to make sure you don't want no extra courses or reverbs or anything extra that might interfere with your mixing process so usually that's what I'm doing is just turning off the effects, uh, anything of that nature. It's all that. Uh, that's really it on the pads. It's just kind of the bring a little atmosphere to it all. And then um, we'll go ahead and work on this uh, melody here. I'll do the chorus, I guess, portion of it and just play that for you. So uh, the, the melody here is designed to be really simple. Like really the thing about Melodic Progressive House for me is that it, it really uh, honors simplicity in music. And I didn't want it to be too complicated. I mean, you can't help it as a human being. I think you just kind of complicate stuff, you know. But the idea is just four notes, four notes. And the four notes is always going up, 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 up you know, up, up, up. And um, and uh, that's the idea is kind of to lift you up to lift the track up lift the entire uh feeling of it up you know it's the whole idea of putting the inspiration inside of it you know and uh this is how i approached it with the melody uh just something really simple i did play this out on the keyboard first kind of a variation of it i showed one of my my friend he came in and it was saw me and i just played a little bit of how i wanted it to be and uh, this is essentially uh the idea of it all is something super simple but you take it a little bit further and, and, and learn how to work with the simple to create even something that sounds even complicated to the rest you know but uh, there's there's a lot of beauty in it personally i i think so that's kind of my whole whole uh was my whole goal here going into creating this was just uh to make it very simple and uh very very pleasing i guess for myself but for anybody else that that chooses to listen uh my instrumental choices was just like a 
a vibraphone and then I layered it on top with like a little EP sound, E piano sound. And the E piano sound was just to uh, carry out specific notes inside of the melody. So even if I played that by itself, you can kind of hear it just playing this. Yeah. So the whole idea is just to carry out, it's like a little layer on top of the melody. And you notice you don't have to always be super hardcore with your layers. It can be just as layered as you like or light. Just depends on how you want to fill your sound. Uh, usually layer helps you fill the frequency space. So this is something to keep in mind. But really layering for me is great to uh, carry parts of the, of the song that you really want to emphasize. And uh, that's the whole reasoning behind this, this little layer right here. It's just to emphasize parts of it. And you can see it's real simple. It's just A, D sharp, A, C, A, D sharp, A sharp, D. You know, like it just it just goes up and down between like basically three notes. And uh, simplicity is the key. And I hope that that's what I've uh, I've implicated here throughout it all. And everything here, and then you know, I have like little mel melodic layers, basically, but they're all the same. And you can see that um, it's just uh, it's just panned different ways, and they're different uh, harmonics sounding patches, all kind of meshed together to create the whole melodic effect, you know. And uh, I really I really enjoy it, you know. It's just a it's just a personal enjoying thing, but there's no real reason rhyme or reason behind it all. You can see it's just a, 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 the, the harmonic sort of change a little bit as the track itself progresses. So uh, that's just the, the meat of the melody, but how I bring it to the arrangement is, um, is I, I take pieces of it. Um, I've done this pretty much from the beginning. I always just take pieces of it. and uh, introduce it slowly and throughout the track. I've really learned this throughout my progressions where, you know, you really enjoy the melody and, and things that are going on, but uh, you, you don't want to give too much of it out at once. You want to kind of keep it all within, uh, you want to kind of like tease the listener with what's to come throughout the track, even if it's a couple minutes in or 30 seconds in. Um, so just kind of like whenever you do approach your melody, melodic progressions on these, it's way it's way more fr fruitful to introduce them uh, however you want to but I just kind of just take them by piece by piece some people uh, like to filter them in some people uh, 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 like blend it in uh, with what well, another part like the melodic the arps blend out and the mel melody blends in and it's really beautiful when, when people do things like that as well uh, anything is great you know there's no kind of real real rhyme or reason to it but there's the idea is just uh, you don't want to just put it all out there at once. Uh, give the track some time to kind of build and let the melody build up with the track. Uh, this is kind of the definition or the definitive quality of the progressive <laughs> in melodic progressive house is that things need to progress. Uh, however you do decide to do that is, is up to you. But uh, uh, progression is the name of the game and you progress it to a point. And then you you sort of regress it and give it a a, a a different take on the progression around the bridge, and that's the whole idea. Is this is all about just a little bit of progression, and then we degress it at the bridge. We let everything kind of fade away, all the elements fall out, and then we 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 give the bridge itself its own kind of world to exist in. You know, where the way I see the bridge is is. Essentially, you could take that bridge and it could be its own song if you looped it around for an hour, you know. That's the whole idea, but it's the same song. It's like it belongs with that piece. It's kind of like paradoxical, but in the sense, uh, it, to me, it gives the bridge or the breakdown quality of it, what pieces the two parts of it. Uh, it gives that, it, it gives like, it's like the decoration or the uh, texture of the bridge itself, you know. 
Uh, it's a lot of beauty in in it in in of itself. It's not just to get you to the end of the track, you know. It should be where the listener uh, stops and uh, appreciates the view that's around them. Uh, that's how I kind of feel the bridge should be, and that's sort of the reasoning why there's always some kind of uh, like melodic explorative element inside of it. And uh, this could help, you know, maybe this could help you with your productions as far as how you want to look at doing your breakdowns or your bridges, especially when it comes to the genre of melodic progressive house, because I believe this is your like prime time to be a hundred percent unique and original, a hundred percent like you and genuine, like there's nothing about this part of it that can be uh, taken or, or called on something else or another genre, you know? So uh, that's the whole thing around the bridge is just tying together these two portions and this is my take on it, you know. So you can see here that it's real simple. Like, dang, it's only like five notes, really, or four, three notes. Two notes make up the whole entirety of, of the piano bridge. And the rest is carried along by the ele other elements. And um, that's the that's the beauty of it, you know? Like, you don't have to really try. You don't have to, like, really make pretend to make something from nothing, you know? Just let the track be what it is and let, let things that are simple fit into the place. So that was the whole idea. It was to fit the simplicity of it all in there. There's nothing complicated about it. I didn't play this on the keyboard or anything. I just kind of inputted it in on a piano roll. And then I used, I, I highlighted everything and I used Alt-R, which is a randomizer. And I randomized the volumes a little bit to make it a little bit more uh, uh, organic and human sounding, you know. Uh, so there's nothing like special or big tricks about it going on here. It's just uh, a, a method of me going about doing it in a way that I've learned to present it and replicate a more organic and natural sound to the to the track. Um, that's really the 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 essence of this whole track. I did, I mean the the drums. I could talk about the drums and stuff, and and all the, these things. But I tell you, they're nothing special. It's all just uh, just whatever you like. Uh, pick it however however it goes. But you can kind of take a peek here. about like what I excuse me what I um did to uh go about creating them there's nothing really too much it's, it's really just the layering thing layering and panning and then all after that it's mixing uh but but really there's nothing special to do when it comes to them is it takes a lot of just listening and then you do a you do just your mixing side of things to do it so don't get too hung up on it and don't get too caught up on like how I did it and how, how I go about it. But if you want to study a little bit more uh, about how the drums and these things are, uh, the project itself, all this is free. Uh, it's gonna be free for you to download the, the stems and everything. So uh, you could take this, you could open this up in your FL Studio and, and do the same thing. Because uh, the whole point of this is just to kind of spread the love, to share this wonderful music that I love to create, that I think more people should create, to be honest. And I want to be able to show people how I go about doing it. And if they like it, if they resonate with it, you know, if you're an artist, even if you don't even make this genre, you know, or, or like make music in this style, so to speak, uh, I still think there's qualities in it that may be relevant to how you can go about your productions and things of that nature. So I don't want to go too long with this video. I don't want to... Uh, uh, talk about it forever you know hopefully this is just enough to get you a little bit of taste about what I did to create this uh, I hope you guys did enjoy or learn or or found something in this that was useful uh, thank you everybody so much uh, massive shout out to my patreon supporters that have been supporting me in my process uh my people here who have subscribed to me on youtube and, and comment on all the videos that i post 
Uh, it's not unnoticed. Thank you all so much. I appreciate it. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. I we, I'm going to be making more videos, more things of this nature uh, in the coming months and years. It's just been super busy and I've been really just learning how to sort of categorize and keep track and catalog what I'm doing so far. That way I can be better about delivering you guys more stuff, you know. Uh, the essence of this music is always free. It's always beautiful. It's always uplifting. And I want to kind of retain that essence and all that I do. And I also want to be able to deliver stuff to the community that is interested. Things that's you know unique to it free stuff free sample packs free projects more of the things of these nature so your support you sharing you commenting you you purchasing this stuff on beatport and, and and following me it's 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 doing so much and i appreciate it uh, thank you everybody so uh that'll be it for today uh i hope you all enjoyed it oh and then before i let you all go just want you to let you know there's a remix contest going on right now for this track. Uh, it it's, uh, ends on the 31st of December. You just need to download all the, the files for it. There's information. Uh, I'll link my Facebook post where I posted it. You can enter. You have a chance to release it officially on my label. A chance to win a $25 gift card. Uh, some merchandise. Uh, lots of cool stuff, man. It's just... It's great. It's super exciting, and I'm really excited to be doing something in the name of Melodic Progressive House. Uh, super excited, and I can't wait to be doing more of these things uh, in the future. So just keep tuned, keep keep following, keep sharing, and uh, I will see you all on the next one. Much love. Thank you all. Bye-bye.